Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just going to give an overview of electric mobility in Nepal, a little situational analysis of what's going on, what are the trends, and what can we expect so far, and um, and so on. So, I'm going to start my English presentation. I'm going to start my last one. 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 विद्युतीय परिवर्तन में क्या भाई रहता है सर आगे डिग्री बातों क्यों ना सबसे बनेर अभी टॉक अबाउट द ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर इन नेपाल अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ हिस्टोरिकल कॉन्टेक्स्ट करंट स्टेटस एंड ट्रेंड्स चैलेंजेस अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड द वे फॉरवर्ड ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर नेपाल्स ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर इज Ninety-six percent are private vehicles, and that is increasing day by day. So, if you look at the numbers, in 1990, about 11 percent of the overall vehicle fleet was public transport vehicles. 2018, that has gone down to five percent. If you look at the electric vehicle fleet, it's about one percent, but 80 percent of that one percent is three wheelers. And we see this um, in a graphical. You know, if you put a graph of the motorcycles and uh, vehicles, it's going up very steeply. Um, you'll see that about 14% growth annually in vehicle population. And if you just look at two wheelers, it's 17% in growth rate. Now that's very high for a country with a population growing at around 2.3% or so. Um, as a result, what we have is now um, motorcycles dominate the streets um, with about almost 80% of the vehicles registered are 80, you know, motorcycles. Um, almost 8% are you know, small light duty vehicles such as car, Jeep, van, and then buses would be only about 1.5%. And then you add to that a micro buses about 0.25%, mini buses about 7.7% and so on. So that makes it 2-3% of these bus fleet. And then you've got some e-rickshaws as we talked about, which is basically electric three wheelers. All of that is consuming a lot of fuel and um, the petroleum consumption in Nepal is skyrocketing. It's um, going up at around 21% per year in the past decade. And um, particularly diesel um, consumption is very high. And that of course is resulting in a lot of air pollution as well as um, you know, disruptions in the economy in a way. Because if you look at all, our, all the revenue that we earn from exporting everything, and you put that on one side, and you put all the money we spend on importing just one item, petroleum, the petroleum, the money spent on petroleum is twice as high as all our imports combined. So this, uh, you know, is causing great pains, uh, causing huge trade deficits in the country as well. Electric mobility came into the country quite a um, long time ago, almost 50 years ago, we had electric buses that ran from the city of Kathmandu to Bhaktapur. Um, initially, we had around 16 of them, later went up to 32. Um, but they stopped operations in around 2008, mainly due to mismanagement. And then, you know, in, in, when we talk about buses, battery operated buses were launched in 2018, five of them, but they're not in operation. And then we have two um, electric buses run by Sundari Atai that, that are operating in Ring Road area and more um, on, its, on the way. Um, three wheelers, like I said, it, it, you know, we've had these Safa tempos, which are brilliant, wonderful little vehicles for the past you know, 25 years, and we have about 700 of them in Kathmandu, and besides that, almost 30,000 electric rickshaws in the Tarai. Electric cars as well, we've had them for a while. Um, the first ones were little Reva cars that came, and then now we have around 1,000 or so e-cars. I think this, this number is from last year, so it's definitely gone up. Um, electric two-wheelers as well, around 6,000 of them. Um, again, this has gone up. These are, um, the price is quite competitive now in the market. You can buy an electric two-wheeler for about the same price as an electric, or sorry, a, a petrol two-wheeler. But still the demand is not going up very high, mainly because of consumer confidence uh, on these two-wheelers are still very low. There's been some attempts to convert IC engine vehicles to um, electric. Um, starting with, in 1992, there was a small group um, of you know, enthusiasts in electric te vehicle technology, um, electric vehicle development group, they converted this small little Volkswagen car. Um, in 1993, as I said, Safa tempos were, the ch original chassis were from um, diesel tempos that got converted into 
um, Safa Tempus. And this is, like I said, quite a long time ago. In fact, before even electric vehicles were starting, you know, produced in India. Gulas Motor, a local company, actually uh, made electric vans in 2006. There were some attempts to convert um, electric van by Sri Eco Visionary in 2006. They did a good job. In fact, it was converted. Um, 2007, a small bus was converted by Himalayan Light Foundation. And then also a different type of, you know, two, um, three-wheeler by um, Sri Eco Visionary again in 2008. And in recent times, some other attempts have also been done. So there has been some progress. But the picture isn't all rosy. This actually is um, unfortunately a dump site for clean vehicles in located in what was the trolley bus um, depot and actually now is compound of Department of Transport Management. And ironically, it's just located across the street from the parliament. Um, the, the writing on the bus actually says, Manai Bhaushyahu, or I am the future. But unfortunately, these trolley buses are just dumped there and several of the electric um, tempos are also dumped there. Um, in fact, I just took this picture yesterday. So it's unfortunate, but it also shows that there are challenges in the way. Okay, there is definitely possibilities. There's a lot that we have done, but also um, we have made some mistakes in the past that we need to learn from. Also in terms of policies, there are policies. In fact, this picture shows Nepal's prime minister launching the Nepal Action Plan for Electric Mobility three years back. The other person in the picture was the then um, environment minister. So this policy has been launched but um, implementation has been fairly weak. And then the same day, these five buses were launched, but the buses never really came into you know, operation because of various um, issues with um, um, testing of those buses. So even though some places policies are there, they need to be backed up by programs, by action, and by commitment to move this um, agenda forward. Um, this is the data from I got from customs um, in, in the past five years. Um, electric vehicle um, has been import has been dominated by three wheelers, as I said earlier, and the three wheelers numbers, you know, it went up. It was quite high five years ago, and that has also come down. After, in the past couple of years, two wheelers have gone up slightly, but not enough. And um, in 2019, 20, 2021, it was quite low because the custom duty um, was um, quite high at that time. It was increased. So this fluctuation in policy results in a fluctuation in the market um, that we have seen. And this year, in fact, with the government putting out more favorable policies, that number is due to go up. It's go already going up. Um, but still, um, it's, it's something that we need to be careful about um, as we move along. Like I said, the demand for electric um, vehicle is rising this year, particularly after the reduction in custom and excise duty in 2021. And in fact, supply is not keeping up with the demand. In the, the first um, article here, the title says, body um, supply China. The demand has gone up, but the supply is lagging. And if you book now, you're not going to get the vehicle immediately. In fact, you're going to wait several months before the vehicle comes. Similarly, for charging stations, when the Nepal Electricity Authority um, invited proposals to setting up charging stations, immediately they had 150 proposals to set up these charging stations. So which means that people are showing interest in setting up charging stations as well. Banks are giving um, special loans for electric vehicles. This um, other poster over here shows NMB Bank saying that you know they'll give special um, loans for 80% of the cost of the electric vehicle at 6.84% interest rate. So what this tells us is that there is potential. The, as soon as the custom and excise duty went down, the demand has started to go up. Um, but still, in the two-wheeler industry, two-wheeler sector really, and the electric bus sector, the demand is still low. I think right now the demand is increasing in the light-duty vehicle sector. Now, if you look at globally, globally also, this is you know booming. Um, if you look at these are numbers from the Bloomberg NEF um, annual report that they put, put out, Electric Vehicle Outlook. Um, you see that particularly in the bus segment, right? It's, it's going up steeply. Um, it's very high, the share of the fleet. And that's mainly driven by policy. And then you see also, in, you know, light duty vehicles and so on. High com heavy commercial vehicles is kind of low, but that is also due to come up very soon. And one of the reasons for this is the falling prices of battery. This is battery prices that have gone down in 10 years 
by 89%. And you see this, you know, this is for lithium ion battery, the cost per kilowatt hour has gone down significantly. And as a result, what we see is electric vehicles becoming more affordable and more accessible in the um, international market. And that's definitely going to play um, a role in our market as well. And this is um, EV sales um, in 2020. And again, this is from the EV outlook of 2021. And they basically say that within vans and trucks, about 1% of the sale is electric. In passenger cars, that's four times higher, 4%. In buses, that's almost four, 10 times higher than that, 39%. And in two, three wheelers, it's 40%, 44%. And the size of the global fleet is already 216 million. So if you just look at this picture, a couple of slides ago, I said that what is lagging behind in, in Nepal is buses and two wheelers. But if you look at this picture globally, buses and two wheelers, um, there's a big share of electrification in that segment. So I think there's a possibility for that in Nepal as well. And basically, um, the outlook also says that by mid-century, by, sorry, by mid-decade, um, 2025, 2026, there's going to be price parity. Or in other, words, in other words, the cost of electric owning an electric vehicle is going to be almost the same. Um, buying an electric vehicle, not just owning it, um, is almost going to be the same as buying a fossil fuel vehicle. So that will also drive the market. Um, we also need to, when we talk about electric mobility, we also need to talk about electric um, trains. In Nepal, there are many plans. And you can see several plans here, the, the east-west railway, um, along with the link railways that connect various towns with the east-west railway. There's the proposed um, railway connecting um, Kathmandu and Raksol. There's also a proposed railway connecting um, Lumbini, Kathmandu and Raswagadi. And of course, there, we, there's always also talk about a metro system in Kathmandu. But a lot of this, you know, it's in the plans, but the progress has been quite slow. So particularly for freight transport, this would have been a great um, initiative for Nepal. Unfortunately, it's been very slow though. So overall, if you look at the situation of electric mobility in Nepal, um, look at it from five perspectives, policy, governance, technology and markets, financial financing and resources and knowledge management. Challenges, yes, there are policies and, but there are some conflicting policies and targets and um, Mr. Shivari Sakota later is going to talk more about policies, so I'll not get into detail. Um, the policies lack implementations, they lack plans and investments in it, and there's stand, lack of standards for electric mobility, for testing electric vehicles, and so on. On the opportunity side, like I said, there are some good policies. The second national development in national determined contributions that Nepal submitted to UNFCCC has targets related to EVs in it. Um, and now the government has reduced custom and duty. So there are some opportunities there as well. Governance, overall public transportation system management is poor. Institutional structure lacking for electric vehicles and coordination is lacking. But there's also a transport authority bill that's coming, you know, a bill in parliament that will establish a transport authority. Local governments are taking some initiatives. We will hear later on in the um, panel discussion um, province and municipalities particularly um, interested in EVs. Technology, challenge, so far, there's very limited vehicle models available in the market. Charging infrastructure is not there yet. And most importantly, probably consumer confidence and demand is still you know, fairly low. On the positive side, technology is improving, price is falling globally. NEA already started you know, putting charging stations and some Nepali entrepreneurs already getting into EVs or even making them making EVs here or, or assembling them. Financing. There is a lack of financing mechanism to support electric vehicles. We don't have a uniform policy for financing, um, just like most other countries would have. Uh, particularly in the public transport sector, we don't have enough inv in investment coming from the government in particular. And human resource is also a challenge. On the opportunity side, pollution tax through which we could you know, earn three, four billion rupees easily in a year, which is basically tax charged on um, fossil fuels, could finance EVs. Electricity supply in the country is increasing, which is great. And government has invested 
3 billion rupees, which is about 25 million rupees, 25 million dollars in Sajayatat for electric buses. Big challenge on knowledge management side, in a, insufficient data on transport, um, lack of data processing and dissemination, and insufficient research and development. On the opportunity sides, there are some local universities, Trivon University, Kathmandu universities that, um, and some institutions um, such as the National Innovation Center, which are starting to conduct some research. So overall, there are a lot of challenges, but I'd say there are some opportunities as well. If we can you know, take on these opportunities, we could do quite a bit in this sector. And among all these opportunities, I think the priority should be one, public transport, electric bus systems, investing in electric buses, and charging infrastructure. Electric two-wheeler, urban freight, that would go rapidly into um, electrification. And that would be very benefit beneficial because, for example, these, um, you know, now there's a lot of delivery companies that are providing deliveries in cities and then cover a lot of kilometers each day. And so if you can electrify that sector, that would be, you know, really good. And even if you look at policies in India, a lot of, you know, policies, for example, the Delhi electric vehicle policy, focuses on the, this urban freight sector as well, and want, they want to make it totally electric by 2024. And the third thing is the public procurement. Government has to invest in electric vehicles. Government has to buy electric vehicles. This particular picture you see, Nepal Electricity Authority investing in 15 motorbikes just recently. Um, it's a small investment, but a very important one, and we hope others will join the bandwagon as well. And the whole reason for all of this is just as an example, we, we, this is a you know study that we had GGGI had done together with us um, almost five years ago to compare the cost of a diesel bus, a uh, Viking bus, which is basically what we have in Sajayatat with um, electric buses. These are BYD buses, and these are estimates we had at that time. The cost has come down quite a bit, but still, you see that the acquisition cost of acquisition is very high. Okay. But if you include the cost of economic cost, social cost, environmental cost, which is almost the cost of the total cost of the electric bus, okay, then it's not very high. But that cost is something that the society, that benefit really is what society gets from investing in electric vehicles. So that is, should be um, enough reasons for the government to put some subsidy on electric buses, particularly for um, public transport, and I think this study also clearly shows the need for government investment in public buses. So overall, I would say that Nepal has a national action plan for electric mobility and an MDC that in a support has targets for electric mobility. The challenge for us is to implement it. And in that, there are three major components that it talks about. One is an institutional structure. We need an institution to promote electric mobility, a financing vehicle to finance um, various types of um, support that man, um, electric vehicle users, bus operators, or even manufacturers would need. And third would be a national program for electric mobility that is um, continuous over at least three years so that people can plan and um, invest accordingly. I would say prioritize in two wheelers and buses, two wheelers because that's 79% of our vehicle fleet, buses because they travel all day in the city and that's buses um, do emit a lot of diesel, you know, they consume a lot of diesel and emit a lot of carbon dioxide and pollutants as well. So public transport and two wheelers should be the priority. Standards required for um, different types of e-vehicles, um, chargers and retrofitting and also testing protocols are required and that should be done by the government ASAP. Um, as I said earlier, public procurement should be mandated and the use of EVs in key sectors should be mandated, such as urban freight, ride sharing, taxis, um, and overall information and data management should be a priority. Thank you very much. I will end here. Um, and I will translate my own presentation in Nepali in one, one you know, minute. So, I Namaskar, I have a question Nepal, विद्युतीय परिवहन को अवस्थाको बारेमा कुरा गरेका थिए अहिलेको अब हाम्रो अवस्था कस्तो छ भन्दाखेरि हाम्रो यातायात प्रणालीमा धेरै जसो गाडीहरु छन् हैन हाम्रो भनौं न रोड बेस्ड ट्रान्सपोर्ट छ र त्यसमा पनि धेरै जसो निजी सवारी साधन छ सार्वजनिक सवारी साधनहरुको संख्या त एकदमै घटेको छ 
विद्युत सवारी साधन भो करीब करीब एक प्रतिशत छोड़ अस्सी प्रतिशत तीन पांग्रे तर संभावना यो वर्ष नहीं ठैक्क हम बजे भाषण में हम भंसार दर कम करने बितीक विद्युत सवारी में डिमाण्ड बढ़िया तर कह बढ़िया धेरे भादा खेल यो दुई पांग्रे में राम पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट सार्वजनिक यातायात में बढ़िया छेन तेल तैं इन्वेस्ट कर सरकार ने नेशनल एक्शन प्लान फर इलेक्ट्रिक मोबिलिटी लियाई सकते तीन टाइप कुछ मेनली है इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल लाई नहीं प्रवर्धन करना को संस्थागत संरचना बनु पर्यटन आर्थिक सहयोग दिन को संरचना होने पर्च रही कार्यक्रम होने तेस में लगानी करने होने इलेक्ट्रिक बस री पांग्रे प्रमोट करने हो स्टैंडर्ड बनाने हो सरकार आप इलेक्ट्रिक गाड़ी किन्ने हो इस संबंधी सूचना तथा डाटा मैनेजमेंट में लगानी करने हो सैक्टर में हम धीरे अगर बढ़ना सकता धन्यवाद थैंक यू